Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor here. Who's ready to level up their marketing? Well, today, Dan and Lloyd are discussing five marketing strategies that have proved to be game changers for them on the road to working with global household name brands. Basically, things we've tried, they worked. Yeah. Now we can say, it works, you do it, rather than doing the hard work to work it out. Good answer. Yeah. You'll hear about actionable steps that anyone can take that will work wonders for any business, big or small. I think, though, Lloyd, there will be a lot of listeners who don't have like, hundreds of comments on their content every week to then do this strategy with. If you're in that category of people, then keep listening because the number one strategy in this list, do that, and then you'll get these comments. Right, let's get stuck in. This is episode 75 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Why is this podcast going to be incredibly useful to the anchors listening, Lloyd? Well, hopefully, because they can basically just nick stuff that we've already done and had success <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah. rather than work it out themselves. Yeah. That's To be honest, that is the honest <laughs> thing. Isn't that why people <laughs> listen to podcasts to learn stuff and, yeah. and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, things we've tried, they worked. <laughs> yeah. Now Still we can say, do. it works, you do it, mm. rather than doing the hard work to work it out. Good answer. Yeah, it was still hard work to do, but... Yeah. Yeah. So how, like, I think firstly we need to, because um, this episode is all about sharing our five most effective marketing strategies we've used ever, I just want to clarify, what do we mean by most effective? Because Ooh. this could be mm. change... Yeah. Well, I suppose we need some KPIs, Dan. <laughs> Stop we just need... saying random <laughs> collections Business of acronyms. letters. <laughs> right, we need some CMOs on the POPs. <laughs> um, I don't know what that would mean. Um, KPIs. I don't know that we genuinely do. I think we do. So I would say, l- looking at our notes and what we're going to talk about, mm. uh, probably business income. You know, we're talking about marketing strategies. Yeah. What actually brought the most value, mm. Yes. Uh, actual money, into mm. our business so customers saying yeah here's some money to do this stuff um i suppose profit yeah i mean you don't need to go into too much detail i'm just thinking of it as oh you weren't actually <laughs> asking me for me to give an answer it's just part of this the, the kind of preamble conversation no no i am I'm, but like mm. the the marketing strategies that have brought, brought the most revenue in like okay. that, that's how i oh, judge that's it. how you wanted me to answer it <laughs> okay got you uh, I what actually, I think, Dan, I think I, actually, I think we should judge it by the most revenue that these <laughs> strategies have brought in. I met my friends at the weekend, mm. and they this some of them listened to the podcast, and they said um, one of them was talking about how whenever I ask you a question, and then I think of a funny story, and I get so excited to tell this story, and you're trying to be serious and provide value to the listeners, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to say some stupid story. I yes I have noticed that as well. You kind of and and you do make those noises into the mic when you you're, you're going to go. No, it's because I get so excited to share these weird stories. I know, oh but there's two people. I know. That. <laughs> no, I really tried. To when help when you back. ask me questions, sometimes you have to actually let me answer it. But, Sorry, Lloyd. But yeah, what I wanted to say is we should judge it by revenue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's really what I think. Um, no, so go on, let's do go that. On, what do you think? No, no. I, well. It's the same thing, but okay, revenue cool. and really they all have been profitable cool. for us as well. Bringing in the right people yeah. so it's profitable. And also I, I do think fun, as in it's, this marketing has brought in uh, the kind of work, work that we want, the kind yeah. of work we want to do that we enjoy doing, mm. and we can deliver. Because if if we're saying these marketing thingies get, get, get loads you of like shit clients, loads in. of rubbish leads that will mm. be really low quality and no profit, then it's and not, it, yeah. then it's rubbish. Okay. That's cool. My so logic. I think the way we should do this is go backwards. And I'm going to ask you: is yeah. this, Are you okay with this? Yeah. Go backwards from number five, four, three, two, one, and take it in turns. Yeah. Do you know what? I've seen that done before. When you know when you're talking about a top five. So what you're <laughs> saying is you're going to go with the fifth best. <laughs> Shut up. And then progressively get to the top one. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, go on, Lloyd. You you go first. You sarcastic prick. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I think that's the most aggressive thing we've ever had on the Business Anchors podcast. I'm joking. Yeah, no, um, go on, you go first. So we go down from five. What's the fifth most effective marketing strategy in your... In, in my opinion, from your notes, I... Oh, right. Have you, not, have you not come with your own ones? 
Oh no! Oh okay. I'm I'm talking about the ones that you've. Oh okay. You've put oh, so you've literally done no prep for this. <laughs> well, Dan, if if this was called the top ten marketing strategies, <laughs> maybe I would have created another five when we were prepping for this. Okay, cool. Okay, think so, about think about your titles, mate. All right. So, so what's, what's welcome the... to the most passive aggressive episode <laughs> of Business Anchors you've ever heard. So, Dan, what's your fifth? Okay, so my fifth is. LinkedIn outreach videos. Okay. Sales, not marketing, whatever. I, no, I know. <laughs> Passive aggressive. <laughs> you know, so LinkedIn outreach videos, and we actually recently did an episode on this. Mm. We've, we've, what I realized when I was thinking of these strategies, we've done podcast episodes going into the detail of how we've done all of these things. Mm. So um, I think that's a good thing. So if people hear like, oh, that could work for my business, we can actually tell them which yeah. episode where we go into detail exactly. of these things that we've done. So yeah. LinkedIn outreach videos on episode 74, which is actually, that was the last, yeah, last week's episode, <laughs> um, we're titled How to Generate Leads and Sales with Creative Outreach Strategies. Mm. We discussed this in super detail, but to just give a very basic insight, it's, a, it's, it's number five in the list because it's a relatively new approach we're using where we're sending videos through um, direct message to people on LinkedIn who are showing a level of interest in what mm-hmm. we do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's working really well. I would say, yeah, that's that's much more sort of a a reaction to the rest of the marketing we're doing that where we then start going to the sales process. And it? it's almost the kind of in-between yeah. where we, we've put our effort into um, the kind of inbound marketing um, strategy we have of putting great stuff out there in the mm. world find people that are engaging and then it kind of that's the crossover where it just starts to get sales sales. where it's like these people are engaging with our outbound marketing strategy and now let's be get a bit more focused in on them and Mm. go hey this is the part where we actually start a discussion and i thought for each of these strategies we'll do a brief like what is it why Mm. does it work and then action step for for listeners So, so why does this one work um I think, well, I know it works because it's highly targeted to people who are already showing an interest in working with us. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and we're really clever when it comes to identifying these people. So they need to be in our target market. They need to be um, engaging with our content in a way to show they've got a level of interest. So for example, if we posted a recent client video that we've produced and someone who's a marketer from a brand comments and says, wow, love this video, guys. This is so cool. That's like, the exact type of person that we want to be sending a video to to say, hi, Sandra. And I think most brands, so a lot of our clients, most people that have um, a fairly significant social media following or or fairly significant brand or business that people know about, um, they always say to me like, oh, yeah, we've got Brian who always comments on like everything. Yeah. <laughs> most people have like a small pool of people that you'll mm. just already know their names if you if you kind of work in social or, or, mm. or wherever, wherever your content is. Where actually you think, actually, Brian does comment on everything. Mm. And he is a he is the facilities manager at that uh, grammar school. And we are selling toilet yeah. paper. Yeah. It might be worth us actually sending him a personal. I think, though, Lloyd, there will be a lot of listeners who don't have that, who mm. don't have uh, hundreds of comments on their content every week um, to then do this strategy with. If you're in that category of people, then keep listening because uh, the number one strategy in this re- list do that be very and then relevant. you'll get these that comments. sounds like one of those <laughs> things that youtubers do where it's like yeah. or oh, tiktokers at the end of this video <laughs> gotta watch to the that end that was actually a genuine one though yeah, not, yeah but it is don't I listen think, if you don't want to yeah i think you're right that that this one's quite niche but number one would be very yeah. relevant as a first step and in terms of an action step um go and listen to podcast episode 74 which is the last episode because we literally break down in detail what we say in those videos, how it works, how we identify people and all the practical steps you can take. So um, if you're interested in learning how to implement the LinkedIn outreach strategy or some kind of outreach strategy, then listen to that episode. Number four. Number four. This New is, entry. <laughs> yeah, I love the radio, Lloyd's back. Um, this is one, this bring back, brings back fond memories. This does bring back fond memories. <laughs> this shuts up. This brings back fond memories. Uh, and it's speaking at events. Remember, Lloyd, back in the day when this, this was probably our most effective marketing strategy for like four years in terms of bringing in new customers. And then COVID happened and it completely stopped and we had to think what on earth are we going to do so that was my question actually is is this relevant in 2021 do you think as 
well, is this a viable option for someone to go, actually, I'm going to take that path and, and I'd say, well, at the moment, for example, so for us, stop completely. More recently, we've been doing more virtual speaking events. Mm. Um, like, for example, today, I've got a, do you know, I've got a live LinkedIn interview with BT. No, I didn't uh, know that. The, yeah. Well, it's part of their skills for tomorrow campaign. I went mm. up to London, did a video, you oh, know yes. about that. Yep. This is basically a live event mm. thing to promote that. And I suppose, you know, with uh, none of us know what is going to happen in the future of the pandemic. It could go either way. Could We could be worrying about this for the next decade mm. or in a couple of weeks. It could be like, oh, mm. Omicron's eaten all the other v- variants <laughs> yeah. and it's all fine. That's how science works. Um, <laughs> but I think even if, uh, my opinion, even yeah. if uh, there's not as many in-person events, mm. um, it actually makes it less effort being a speaker at virtual things mm. it's, and potentially maybe you yeah. wouldn't get the same level of benefit but you you can now do this mm. from your home or your your workplace and lloyd i don't know if you remember uh, way back when episode four bear in mind this is episode 75 episode four we did a a podcast titled public speaking secrets where we talked again in detail about that and also just to, to go to your point let's say covid continues and we're ne- not allowed to see anyone in person I still think the skills, and I spoke about this in that podcast episode, mm. the skills of being able to speak on camera, speak to people, communicate is super important in terms of mm. um, convincing people of your ideas yeah. and generating business. So yeah. e- e- I think it's still an important factor, so, even if for the next five years we're all in our houses. So I understand. So it's good for that those kind of, kind of communication skills and it's that can actually be relevant to a lot of different things that it's worth doing. But... What what's the actual logic behind kind of thinking I'm going to be a public speaker and I'm going to speak at these industry events or I'm going to try and get up at these award shows and give a five minute talk and show I'm good at stuff. So one, it demonstrates authority. Like it's that weird thing of um, when someone's up on a stage, subconsciously people deem them to have authority and know what they're talking about, which sounds stupid because there's a lot of crap speakers out there they just get on stage and try and sell you their book or sell you their stuff yeah um but it's that whole authority thing of that person knows what they're speaking about and also if you're a good speaker when you're speaking you are gen- genuinely demonstrating your knowledge and expertise and also if you're really clever with it you can actually shape keynote talks or sessions that subtly demonstrate the value you provide customers so for example in a lot of our newest talks um, we share case studies to say, here's good stuff you can do with advertainment and entertaining with your marketing. Oh, here's a case study for how we generated millions of views and millions of pounds of revenue through doing that. So it's not like, buy my stuff. Mm. It's actually, here's some value and here's an example that we've yeah. done at Knowlton. I think that's really clever. Subtly, you're saying, oh, here's an example that we've done and you're demonstrating mm. my business does this really good stuff for other businesses your some potential customers will be in the audience there exactly some are going to see the live replay that goes on to linkedin yeah. or facebook or the website of the event you're going to and again um like the the additional benefits of, of of honing in on this speaking skill you attract more opportunities so for example this recent bt opportunity that again is going to garner more opportunities is um, from uh, when I spoke in Digitalium in Romania at an event, posted the video on YouTube. They, I don't know if you know this, but they found us through that video and then got in touch. And I think this is a really good point. It does seem to be a snowball effect with public speaking. Totally. And really, it's like long-term benefits. So I think <clears throat> it's fairly rare that Dan will speak at an event, get off stage, someone will grab him there and then and go, I want to work with you. That Some people say that. Well, but yeah. They, they don't. There's a lot of people that say they that. They say that, <laughs> but that, that doesn't necessarily end in a lot yeah, of new instantly. customers. Um, but the, the benefit that I've really seen over the years is people that get in touch and say, oh, I saw you at this event 18 months ago. Mm. And at that point, they're not thinking they want to work with us, but then things happen within the businesses they're employed by or, or that you know, their own businesses, mm. they get to a point and then they go, oh, I saw a guy talking about this. I think I know a business that can help us with this. Exactly. And that's been the key thing. So it's the the long-term business leads mm-hmm. and conversions that come from that, but also the snowball effect. So every, when you do well and you, you're speaking at a public event and 
uh, then someone else sees that video or is in the audience and books you for the next event and then yep. that's new opportunity so it's definitely a snowball effect until the pandemic starts and then the snowball kind of gets stuck <laughs> goes but, online yeah <laughs> snowball goes online um, um, and in terms of actions go and listen to podcast episode four uh, it'll be interesting if you do that which you should to see the change in the podcast from then to now because I reckon mm. as the, we've done more podcasts we get way more confident and it flows better and stuff so it would be a terrible experience for not you, just but. our work as well though Dan but the guys behind the camera we didn't have Pat the podcast editor we didn't who did the intro at that point so you can pro they'll probably go back and think this is terrible it's probably because <laughs> you don't hear Pat at the start <laughs> yeah. he, he lightens my mood when I when I start the podcast before I get into this shit mm. <laughs> so going in at number three Lloyd number three up to <laughs> is uh, building your personal brand on LinkedIn or building your personal brand in general but for us it's been building a personal brand on LinkedIn um, and again in the early days it was all focused on building mine and then eventually yours as well kind of personal mm. brands but now we're moving way more towards building the company profile and the company brand but certainly this is still a big part of what we're doing today i'd say it could be done either way though like uh, building a personal brand or actually building up the building up the brand the the actual brand and using your kind of team of people and the culture there's been a lot more businesses i think doing that well in the last couple of years definitely before it was oh there's this owner or there's this person high up and this person is building their brand um, for example goat agency i think they did a brilliant job of get like they did a vlog a daily vlog and you really got to know the, t the team members mm. and stuff and it wasn't just about like harry and they almost built up kind of i'd say eight to 12 personal brands within within the business who spoke about different mm. things in the vlogs and you saw the different i think we're doing did. that as well though with our we're moving more towards that with our kind of vlogs and not vlogs um behind the scenes content from our shoots and things on our youtube yeah um, if you want to see those, go and check out Nolton yeah. YouTube. So, yes, yeah, so there's one or, one of two ways you can go there. And I think both can be yeah. beneficial depending on the sort of business you have and your setup. Mm. Um, but why? So, so again, why is this so good, Dan? Um, it's so good because uh, it's one of the uh, quickest approaches to, to reaching the most amount of people. So from our experience, building your personal brand is way easier than building like the brand of a logo or a company because people resonate with people and mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, it's just really worked really well for us on LinkedIn. And we actually did two super detailed episodes, uh, podcast episodes with loads of practical advice to help you build your personal brand and build your personal brand on LinkedIn. So episode 54, fast track your growth, how to build your personal brand on LinkedIn. And episode 45, the non-wanky podcast about building a personal brand. <laughs> that was so smooth I was supposed to be smooth but I forgot the last word <laughs> building a personal um, yeah th those two episodes really do a deep dive into how to build your personal brand um, so definitely go and listen mm. to those as a summary though for those who, who just want to get the benefit from this podcast and mm. won't listen right now what um, what on the surface level can people start to do to you know practically so, get so this moving specifically for LinkedIn um, there's four key pillars Optimizing your profile, your content strategy, strategy, your engagement strategy, and your outreach strategy, which I mentioned a minute ago. Mm -hmm. And it's really about understanding those four pillars and developing an action plan for what you need to do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to work towards those four areas to, to build your brand. So you can, because I think it's quite a daunting thing. So say, say you're, you've got like a LinkedIn account, but mm. you're just a lurker, you watch other people's stuff. I think going from that zero point, it can be quite daunting to be like, I'm going to start this project of building a personal brand on LinkedIn. Mm. But like you said, having it broken down into those little chunks, it makes it so much bite sized steps yeah. to get there. Um, yeah. which obviously we go into more detail in the other podcast. And we actually work with companies and personal brands to help them do that, Lloyd, with our strategy development days. I'm not sure if you knew oh. that. We deliver one of those a month, every yeah. month. That's a really subtle way to show <laughs> how we add value to our customers, <laughs> yeah. which probably takes us quite well into our next point of, of number two. Is it number two? Yeah, it's number yes. two. Which is this podcast the business anchors podcast is our second most effective marketing strategy ever which sounds mental because mm. we're just we just turn up have a chat about weird stuff 
but this is actually generating significant revenue for our business, which yeah. I think most people probably won't believe because it's just. Mm. I think from my side, I think um, what's really good about it is because say you put out uh, TikToks or short videos or how to's or you write blogs that most of them are this kind of surface level detail of mm. who you are and what you do. Whereas with longer form content, like a podcast, people, I think, kind of get a deeper connection with us and our business and what we do before speaking to us. Yep. I was going to say that's the number one benefit of this podcast. So it's very strategically prepared and the things we talk about are very strategic with a kind of uh, fun sort of vibe. But <laughs> I don't have such a laugh, aren't we? Then <laughs> no, but I, I'm just I forgot that fun vibe for a bit. The, the, fe- the feedback I get from people who listen to the podcast is, "Oh, it's value adding." There's a guy called Dan Rice. Hi, Dan, who always posts and constantly says recommends our podcast online and says, "Listen to these guys because it's value adding and it's fun to listen to." Rice, rice, baby. Um, dun, 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 but no, dun, the, dun. the number one reason this podcast works for us is because when I when I jump on sales calls with people, they say they already bring up conversations from the podcast. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened to Lloyd or this. And like, mm. they already feel like they know us. Yeah. So when it comes to a sales inverted commons, commons conversation, um, it's not a case of me trying to sell to them. It's they already know us, they trust us and they hopefully yeah. like us. Yeah. It's more a case of how is this going to work between mm. us in terms of... I think all, what's really key with all of this stuff, like all of this you have to be thinking long term because for the first six months we got yeah. nothing from this did we no no well when it comes to our kpis of <laughs> business revenue all yeah. that stuff and i think too many actions of you know us as a business community are that short-term thinking like oh i've got this sales goal i've got to hit so i'm you know by the end of the month or mm. you know oh we haven't seen a return in that and we've been doing it for three and a half weeks so we're going to stop and do something else i think we've really as businesses got to allow ourselves to do some things that we focus mm. purely on the long term. And I know it's hard to justify sometimes, but for us, when we've done that, it's been a success. And something like this podcast is definitely, it definitely needs the time. It's unlikely yeah. that two episodes in, you're no. going to have this hugely successful podcast that's getting mm. through to loads of people and bringing in loads of business. And we actually, episode 40, titled, How We Made Hundreds of Thousands from a Tiny Podcast Audience, we really go into granular detail of how we strategically come up with the topics of these podcasts because there's a huge amount of thought. I think we've streamlined the process now so it doesn't take as much time, but there's there's a lot of thought that goes into the topics we talk about and how this is all going to ultimately help our overall objectives. Um, So yeah, definitely listen to that episode because we we do go into detail. Just as a point before we go into the next one, Dan, I think a lot of the business anchors listeners won't have the privilege that we do of a team of people that know how to use cameras and camera equipment mm-hmm. and uh, someone that's really good at sound. Neither did we when we started Lloyd, when it was me and you in mum and dad's back room. Good answer. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> no, 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 sorry Lloyd. No, but I, I totally get your point and I think, let, let's say, Lloyd, we started from zero again and we didn't have any of our experience that we have, no team here. I think, like, I would probably start a podcast on Anchor where we have a phone. And if we'd say we didn't have any money to, mm. to get any microphones or anything, we'd have a phone, I'd put it in between us mm. and we'd have a conversation and that's how I'd make the podcast. Yeah. And I'd, I'd, rec- I'd, I'd do a volume game. I would do a podcast every single day where we each day's a topic. Um, so we've noticed that the more regularly you are, and we're going to start on this podcast uploading Knowlton Nuggets, where we have smaller clips more regularly uploaded, because uploaded, that's going to help you go in the charts and things. So I would do that. And I think if you're listening and you have no idea about technology or don't have a team, try something like Anchor, or you can literally record, there's sound recording apps, hmm. you know. So basically don't do that thing where... I we we do all it, do a lot and go, oh, look there, Joe Rogan's got so I'm never going to be able to do yeah. that, so I just won't do anything. Mm. Mm. Okay, don't be that guy or yeah. gal. Good point. Yeah, okay. Well, we're almost there, Lloyd. And this week's number one, we've got advertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, number one, advertainment, entertaining advertising. I think 
we, we did a podcast episode, episode 69 recently called mm -hmm. Marketing 2.0, forget everything you've ever learned about marketing. And in that podcast, we really do a deep dive and tell the story of how we discovered this, this entertaining advertising approach and why it works so well. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, in, in terms of examples of what that is, the entertaining marketing sketches that we produce, the fun creative videos we make, all of that kind of comes up under the sort of entertainment bracket, but strategically scripted and produced to ultimately sell our services. Mm. And that is what we kind of describe as advertainment. And it continues to be the most effective marketing strategy since 2017 mm. when we made that testimonials video, which we explained in the yeah. episode 69 that I just mentioned. I think a lot of uh, people make out that that what we do is quite unusual and new, which there's there are elements of it obviously that we have uh, that are very new. But if you think no. biggest biggest brands, look at TV adverts. The biggest brands in the world don't do a TV ad that go, there is a guy on screen going buy this for six ninety nine. <laughs> Some do. <laughs> Some do. The bad ones. <laughs> yeah. But you know the the biggest brands in the world, the best brands in the world, all their advertising is them creating stuff that is like you, you well mm. that you they oh god i can't talk <laughs> they want you to want to watch yeah so not just saying buy this thing you can get a mm. deal now it's actually you know john uh the john lewis christmas mm. ads is like the peak of this but mm. most tv advertising is like this most online advertising mm. that does well from big brands is like this i think what's what has made people start to really look at what we're doing and talk about it and think that what we're doing is innovative is because we've brought it into a B2B environment. Mm -hmm. Whereas traditionally that fun stuff like Super Bowl ads and stuff has been very much like business to consumer products mm -hmm. like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, food and that kind of thing. Whereas we're literally selling marketing services ultimately. Mm. And what we're doing is doing it in a creative fun way and people aren't used to that. And we've been able to do that with a number of B2B and B2C mm. clients and and doing it for brands that are like global brands, but also being able to do it for smaller brands, smaller brands that are national in the UK um, that wouldn't think mm. it's something they could. But I, and, and I even think like again, if you're listening to this and you are a very a micro business of one person, you know you could start creating TikTok videos at home that are inverted commas advertisement that are you know you could be an accountant sharing tips in a whilst tapping into trends mm. and stuff. Um, there, there's just there's, was, it's such a low barrier to entry. Yeah. Don't get put off, like Lloyd said, by, oh, I haven't got all the camera mm. gear that you've got and all that stuff. I was going to say, matter. we didn't have it when we started. A simplified version of advertainment is just creating content that your potential customers actually want to watch or hear or mm -hmm. read rather than just what you want to tell them, rather than you just saying, oh, these shoes are really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, you know, whatever. This is what I do as a marketing agency. Mm. Just just flipping that, just going, we're not doing anything fancy, but we're going to create stuff that we think they'll actually want to yeah. watch or hear. And I or think that the, just to kind of summarize, I think the simplest action you can take when it comes to, you know, what can I produce that people actually want to watch? Come up with some ideas and then actually ask yourself, would I want to watch that on social media? Mm -hmm. Be honest of, with yourself. Yeah, be honest well. with yourself. Because a lot of the time we have these ideas that, oh, I'll talk about, you know, this new software that we've got. Like, is anyone going to care about that? Or, you know, or are they going to care about cool stuff that's happening in the industry and that they're interested in and that kind of thing? So, yeah. And, and as I say, go and listen to episode 69 because we go into a lot more detail around how you can do that. Great. I will. <laughs> no, you, you won't. Then. Thank you. <laughs> um, so that was uh, the top five. So uh, in at number five, we had LinkedIn outreach videos. Up two at number four, speaking at events. New entry at number three, building your personal brand on LinkedIn. Up one, business anchors podcast. And you at number one, advertisement. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you. I really want to... What episode was it when... I made you um, sell like a product oh. as it to your like yeah, son or to grandma. I hated it. You loved it, and you never stopped talking about it. <laughs> yeah, but, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone remembers that episode, then yeah. please DM me which one it is. Cause... Cool. Well, thank you very much for listening, guys. Please do go to those other episodes that we've um, been speaking about. If any of those things are relevant to you, or you want to learn more, especially if you're a new listener, you've got all that stuff you've missed out on that we've mm. done previously. Oh, one minute, Lloyd. 
There's something that we've forgotten that we need to do. No, we didn't forget it. This is just something we wanted to add in. <laughs> I mean, not add in, but something was supposed to be here. You know that. You know when you always randomly come up with competitions that we don't prepare and it's just very difficult to manage and yes. I have to do it all? Yes. Well, you know, a few weeks ago, the, the episode where we talked about the entrepreneur's operating system and we were giving away two books. Yes. I've actually... Um, been collecting those posts and stuff and entering the people into the draw. And there's two winners. Great. Which we're sending books to. I've already told them, but I just want to let everyone know who that is. Okay. Are you interested in knowing who it is? Yeah. Let me just... Un- oh, my phone's... Okay, so the two winners are... Drum roll, please. Uh, Chris Pipe and Joe Bennett. Congratulations, both of you. Um, enjoy the books. Lloyd's going to personally deliver you both books. Hand no, deliver. No, no, <laughs> that wasn't the agreement. Um, but very happy for you guys. Thanks for entering. I've really enjoyed this chat, Dan. I've enjoyed it Hope as well. you have Business Anchors. And we will see you next week for episode 76 of the Business Anchors podcast. See you then.